at what point was it uh, where you realized that your artistic vision and what you had to offer as an artist was number one, unique, and number two, something that other people would enjoy listening to and derive inspiration from? I think that uh, it's the kind of thing you never know, because people will be complimentary to you even though you're sad. So always, I think, once, once I got into high school, people started to comment on my playing that I could play. But my father was always, he always only listened to music. So I would go sometimes and play with him, and I would circular breathe and play. But people would cheer for me, and he would just. <laughs> so when I would finish, he would say, hey, man, the circus is down the street. <laughs> And I think I was very fortunate because, of course, we trusted him. He knew so much more than we knew. And we also knew he was just about music. And at a certain point, I started to get recognized or accolades, but I really couldn't play. So I understood that somebody has to get publicity. I got publicity. The question for me in my 20s was just, how can I learn how to play? Already I was winning awards and stuff, and could I play as good as real musicians who could play, like Woody Shaw or Clark Terry or Trump players who really could play? No. And uh, it was a matter of being dedicated to, to learning. And uh, so far as the people rallying around me, I think the one advantage I had over people in my age group was that I was philosophical and I believed in jazz and I never wavered. So no matter bad reviews, no matter what was said, I would be very clear philosophically. <clears throat> Another thing is I would discuss racial issues and be very serious about it. I was not afraid to state an opinion and to stand by it. And I also had to take what came with it. And I took it. And it was a good 20 years of it. So Dizzy Gillespie once told me when he read an interview, he pointed, he had the interview in his trumpet case. He pulled it out. He went, <laughs> he said, oh. I said, oh, yeah, man. I just said, he said, no, 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 no. A lot of this stuff is true. But be ready for the return. It might not ever stop. Then I was like 19 or 20. I didn't understood, understand what he meant. At 42, I understood it. So I think that because people could, could identify with my perspective, and I was always very clear about my perspective and always about the music and did not waver about it, it allowed all the people who believed in it to kind of say, hey, we might not agree with everything this, this guy is saying, but he is about the music. And in that way, I think uh, I was fortunate. And that just being around my father gave me an example of uh, what we were talking about earlier. Is something relevant if it's not in people's mouths? Well, I saw him play gig after gig after gig for not that many people for many years. And it was relevant to him. So when I came out here, I was shocked that I got publicity and people knew who I was. I really was trying to be like him. And uh, everything has been gravy since then. You know, like, okay. And uh, I think it's a, it's a matter of just a, that and maintaining a seriousness and a belief. Because when you play, your philosophy is what you are expressing. 